Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you an update from Heart of the Swarm MLG Anaheim. I know you're looking at a screen of black and wondering what the heck is going on. I actually got some screenshots to show you guys and I'm going to do a little bit of talk. I know you guys have most likely already seen the new, intro the new unit introduction, but I wanted to give a little bit of a talk about what these units are doing and also essentially how I think the game is going to be changed. Now, what you'll immediately notice is that there's kind of like this mothership looking thing on top of a nexus. Now, the idea and the reasoning behind this, or what you may have remembered from the MLG, or the last playtest of Heart of the Swarm at BlizzCon, was that the nexus had the ability to recall units, and also had the ability to um, turn a building into a photon cannon for natural defense. What Dustin Browder uh, had mentioned was that it almost felt Protoss was a bit too powerful. Once Protoss was able to get up onto three bases, they were saying, you know what, I got three Nexus, Nexi or Nexus, I'm able to attack and I can mass recall and then attack somewhere else and mass recall and attack somewhere else. And, and Protoss really didn't have to, um, you know, didn't really have to invest anything in an attack. So the way that they resolved this was that they kind of brought in the mothership into the early portion of the game. Now, first thing I want to say, the mothership is still in Heart of the Swarm. So all you guys were like, no, the mothership is gone. The mothership is still in Heart of the Swarm. One big change, it doesn't have the cloaking field. More on that later. So what you're going to see is the mothership core. What the mothership core is, it's essentially a mothership that can't fly around and cannot attack. What can it do? It can teleport from nexus to nexus. It can mass recall, as you guys see in this screenshot here. And it can also... And do the purify ability and what that purify is going to do is that purify allows the nexus to actually attack back so it's going to be one of those things where if a terran player is dropping inside your base or doing simultaneous drops they can attack you can purify at one nexus and then save your warp ins for another this will allow you to handle multiple drops pretty easily pretty well now the second thing I wanted to take a look at is the Tempest. The Tempest, the new anti-air, anti-super, super long siege range unit for Protoss. And when I say super long, the current version at MLG Anaheim has a range upgradable up to 22. Yeah, I, you heard that right, 22. Siege tank has a range of 13. This is 22. So what is this Tempest good for and how is it not broken? How is it not overpowered? First of all, its attack is slow. And I, when I say slow, I mean like slower than a siege tank slow. Slower than a siege tank times two slow, as you're going to see that it is an attack speed of six. So every six seconds it can attack once. And its base damage, I believe, is 40 for normal attack. 60 versus massive units so it's not going to be that all all powerful unit that a lot of people are worried about but what it is going to be is it's going to be a much more tactical tactical siege strike very very long range and what it also opens up for protoss is the fact that it is a tier 3 capital ship that isn't countered by vikings and corruptors one of the problems that protoss had was both tier 3 options, carriers and colossi, were countered by vikings and corruptors. So there was no real reason to do a tech switch over. And if you didn't, and if you if you did do the tech switch, you were really investing in your own downfall. So that's the reason why um, that this Tempest has such a long range. It does need a spotter in order to attack. And that is where the oracle comes into play. Now, uh, the Oracle has three abilities. One of them is Cloak, the other is Entombed, and the third one currently escapes me. Um, Michael, do you remember? Um, All right, so my, Michael, um, my friend from SC Legacy, is going to be uh, letting me know the name of it. But first thing I want to say is Cloaking Field has been moved from the Mothership to the Oracle. The, it is an activated... Oh, it looks like Michael has the answer. Preordained. Preordain. All right, so the third ability is preordain. I'll get into that in just a little bit. So, first thing, cloak. The cloaking field has been moved to the Oracle. It is a unit, the Oracle is a unit trained from the Stargate. It has a movement speed of 
the same as a Mutalisk, which means it's very, very fast. It has 20 shield, 80 hit points, and it, and the first thing that and it can do, it, it can cloak, and it can entomb, and it can preordain. The cloaking field is a 60 second activated cloak across all units except for the oracles. What this means is that Protoss is now much stronger with their cloaking abilities as most of the time Protoss players only got up to Dark Shrine and, and that was their, you know, quote unquote cloak detection um, problems that you would actually run into. Because the Oracle is much lower in the tech tree, you can use the Oracle offensively or defensively, as you guys have most likely seen from that MLG Anaheim video already, where the Oracle cloaks buildings, utilizes force fields, and then one sentry and one photon cannon finish off the rest of those Zerglings. 60 seconds is a very, very long time, and in the early game, it gives Protoss that additional defense. Now, what we are also going to be seeing is Entomb. What you see from Entomb is that it blocks minerals. One of the things that Protoss, or that, that in general, Blizzard wanted to do was they wanted to be able to do mineral harassment that was separate from killing workers. I mean, in StarCraft II, worker kills are so, so, so important. They even have a tab for it just so you can keep track of it. But you really wanted to keep each of the races unique. You wanted to make it feel like I'm going to be doing mineral harassment on you or worker harassment on you without necessarily doing that harassment, without killing workers. Each of those, each of these little guys here, um, I don't know if you actually can see my mouse, I don't think you can. Um, each of those little shells have 75 points of damage and I believe lasts 45 seconds. Um, so it, I believe it lasts 25 or 45 seconds. So that is a lot of time lost. And because the Oracle is such a fast unit, it can move around. One of the things that you're gonna, I'm going to be showcasing, or I'm going to be actually um, uploading a battle report from Rob Simpson's and Day 9 of one of the builds. And Day 9, or sorry, da David Kim, who was one of the players, had explained that it was almost better to use spine crawlers as your defense against the Oracle, as opposed to spore crawlers, as the Oracle could cast the, the entomb on, across all the minerals and then escape away before before the spore crawler could actually deal the damage. So the spine crawlers were actually better at poking apart the entombed minerals than actually having the, um, the sorry the spine crawler better at poking apart the entombed minerals as opposed to the spore crawler trying to get rid of the oracle. Now the third thing that I wanted to mention was preordain. Preordain, you cast it on a building and it gives sight of that building and a lot of area around the building. And this is by far the perfect, perfect spotter for the Tempest. It, all the Oracle has to do is the Oracle flies in, casts Preordain on the building. You can actually see what the animation looks like on the command center in this screenshot. And then with that, the Tempest with a range of 22 can start harassing the SCVs. On top of that, there's no way to really get rid of that of that spotter. That spotter is going to be there for two minutes, and for two minutes, those Tempests are going to have free range, free shot, and you cannot get rid of it. That is going to be a very, very annoying, very powerful harassment unit coming in from the Protoss. So just to talk about everything once more, um, we got a change to the mothership for the Protoss. We got a change to Recall. Recall comes in earlier. You also have... Um, purify in order to um, act as a little bit of early defense. The Tempest, I don't know if it will still stay as a 22 range Tempest. It didn't feel overpowered to me, but at the same time, I was only playing against a computer on easy, so and only, only the beta will tell what is going to be happening there. Cloak on the Oracle, moving that cloak, um, the, the mass cloak, much, much earlier for Protoss. We should see a lot of game-changing elements there. And then finally, an Oracle of Harassment spell-casting unit that is also a perfect spotter and works really, really well with the Tempest. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I, I am going, or excuse me, KDRAC will be posting a lot of this information on the SC Legacy website. As that becomes available, I'll go ahead and throw the link to all the hardcore stats that we're providing for you. Thanks for watching. 
Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.